Amen. Well, this morning, we're going to begin a series just called Peace. I want to tell you there's a great need in our world for peace. Amen. I'm not talking about world peace. <laughs> I'm talking about real peace that comes on the inside. I mean, you know what? It's good to pray for world peace, I guess, but I can tell you this, it's not going to happen until the millennial reign. Uh, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but I'm just telling you, it's never happened. It's not going to happen that we really have peace in this world on the outside, but we can have peace on the inside. How do you find peace? Well, one guy said that his therapist told him to find real peace that he needed to try to finish the things that he starts. And so he said, today I finished two bags of chips and a, and a chocolate cake. And uh, I want to tell you that that'll bring you some measure of peace for a moment, but it's not going to last, is it? Maybe that's why we eat sometimes when we're stressed. Anybody else do that? You know, the strange thing for me is, is that whenever Carmen and I go on vacation, uh, we eat, you know, whatever we want, and we forget about the diet and all that kind of stuff, you know, and uh, eat dessert after almost every meal. And, and uh, somehow or another, I usually either lose weight or at least just stay the same. It, it's amazing to me. The only thing I can figure, you know, what I learned from that is, is that I need to go on vacation a whole lot more. <laughs> You know, that's not really it. No, my confession to you this morning is that I need to learn to have peace all the time. That's right. Really strange, but, you know, Carmen and I, we do kind of watch our weight normally and uh, what we eat and everything. And every Monday morning is my peak weight. Why is that? Preacher stresses on Sunday. So I want you to know that I am preaching to me as much or more as to anybody else, but I have a, I don't start to say I have a feeling, I have a knowing that this is a message that all of us need, that we all need that peace of God, and on some level we all deal with stress in this life, and I want you to know that the Lord wants us to have True peace, real peace. You know, the Word of God tells us that Jesus gives us peace. It tells us that we can have peace like a river. It tells us that there's a peace that passes understanding. It tells us that there's a perfect peace that we can have. Our God is Jehovah Shalom, the Lord our peace. I just want to say, we know that this is for us. It's all through the Scriptures. But we need to learn how to really walk that out and how to live in that peace each and every day of our life because the truth is is that most believers seem to be just as stressed as unbelievers. We need peace. A peace that will last through all the storms, through all the trouble of this life. You know what? Stress can make you sick. It can... Uh, weaken your immune system. Stress can cause, well, the simplest things like a headache or stomach problems, but it can also cause serious health issues like a heart attack and even can contribute to cancer. And I'm just saying that it, it takes a toll on the physical body. In fact, when somebody is under too much stress for too long and it just becomes too, too much for them to handle, more than the body can handle, they call it a breakdown. You see, we need to realize how important it is that we deal with stress, and the only way to really deal with it is to have the peace of God. I think there's so many people in our culture that are just trying to keep their head above water. And I think that for us as believers, sometimes we, we just kind of try to manage stress. You know, it's not that we want to be free from it. You know, we're going to really get victory and really have peace, but we're just trying to keep it at a, at a controllable level. And I want you to know that's not peace. 
That's not what God really intends for His people. You know, that we just somehow manage to survive it and, you know, maintain it and manage it. No, I really believe God has a peace for us that is much more. Something that's liberating. Something that really brings freedom in our life. But you know, in this world, the need for peace is so great that people will try just about anything to deal with stress. You know, some try solitude. And, and I want you to know if you're talking about you and Jesus, uh, well, that might work. But, it, you know, you can get alone all by yourself. And you know what happens a lot of the time? You just start thinking about all of the issues and the things that would trouble you. Isn't that, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, people make this a way of life, and I, I'm just going to address this, and I'm just being honest and candid and um, pastorly, uh, and, and uh, if I offend you, well, I just want to tell you I'm trying to help you. See, a lot of people make this a way of life just like the world does where, you know, they need to relax a little bit and so they're going to have a drink. I want to tell you that's a very dangerous pattern. Well, I need to relax. Do you know that's what the alcoholic says? And even if you say, well, I'm free in Christ and I can do this, I, want, I just want to encourage you to think about this. Can, can your family and friends handle your freedom? Or is it a stumbling block to them? Are you sure that your influence and your freedom is not going to cause your child to grow up one day and be an alcoholic because a whole lot of people do? Amen. But here's the bottom line, though. You can't get peace, not real peace, from a bottle. And when we say, oh, I, you know, I just need to relax a little. I want you to know that right there is what I'm talking about. We need the peace of God. Amen. That's the answer. Not anything in this world. It's Him. See, in our culture, we know this, that so many people turn to illegal drugs and how it just destroys their life. Why would they do that? Most of them, it's because they're looking, they're trying to find this peace. And in the time we live now, prescription drugs have become just an, an epidemic abuse of people needing peace. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not judging anybody. What I am saying is, is that it's so obvious there's this huge need for peace. And whenever you say something about prescription drugs, I know, that, you know that's a sensitive subject for people. People say, oh, well, you know, if you're sick, you take medicine. I understand that. I absolutely do. I also know that Jesus is our healer, and I also know that He can give you peace. And I'm just saying that that's, that's not real peace at best. It just numbs the stress for a little while. But real peace is available to us, and real peace comes from Jesus. A lot of people, they try to find peace through some kind of entertainment, and, um, you know... I'm just going to throw myself into this. Just want to watch a TV show, turn my brain off, and think about nothing. And a lot of people do this, you know, they play some kind of computer game. You know, there are all kinds of entertainment where we just kind of escape from life. Does it solve anything? Does it fix anything? The stress, the problems, the issues will still be there when you're done watching that show or playing that game. But it's just amazing how we so often try to deal with stress just by uh, some kind of an entertainment escape. So many even look to religion for peace, man-made religion. You know, all the great religions of the world, and I don't mean great as in good, I mean great as in big ones, all right? All the big religions of the world, they all talk about peace. But the religion of man, the rules of man, can't really bring you peace. You know, 
It can't be found focusing your mind on nothingness to achieve a state of la-la land. You know, focus on the third eye. You don't know what I'm talking about? Good. You don't need to know. But I'm just telling you, you can't get real peace anywhere else but Jesus. We need to know that peace really is for the believer. And we need to know how we can live in this peace and have this peace every day of our lives. That's what this series is about. The first thing we need to know, though, is that Jesus gives us peace. There's only one source of true peace. Romans 16, 20 tells us that He is the God of peace. He's the God of it. He's the author of peace. I just want you to know, He wrote the book on peace. Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and He gives us peace. John 14, 27. This is our key verse for this morning, but there are going to be some others too. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. And not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. Oh, we need to hear that, church. We need to hear it as though Jesus is saying it to us this morning. My peace I give to you. But it's real important that we see here, he says, not as the world gives, because the world's peace is always fleeting. It's always dependent on something else. The peace that Jesus gives, it's a peace that lasts. It's a peace that can endure through all of the difficult times of life. See, a lot of people's peace, it's dependent on the evening news. It's dependent on the stock market. It's dependent on what's going on in the government. And more and more and more, I see in the time that we live is that Christians are not at peace. They're all upset. They're all being out of shape. They're stressed and anxious and they're so worried and fearful. He says, I give you my peace. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. I want to tell you, Jesus' peace is greater than all of the issues of the day and all of the problems and all of the battles, He wants us to have a lasting peace. The world's peace is so dependent on the circumstance of life. And His peace, though, is just dependent on this, that we are able to receive the peace that He has for us. He gives us peace. My peace I give to you. What peace? What peace? He said, my peace I give to you. The same peace that the Prince of Peace has. He says, my peace I give to you. What's his peace like? The night that he made this promise of peace was the night that he was betrayed He knew what he was facing, what was going to happen, yet he had peace. Matthew 16, 21, from that time Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things from the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be killed and raised from the dead the third day, raised the third day. Jesus was completely at peace, talking about his death. I must go to Jerusalem. I must suffer many things. I must be killed and raised the third day. Jesus has a peace that would endure. And we need that kind of peace. He says, not as the world gives. See, it's not like the world's peace. The world's peace is fragile, elusive. It's dependent on other things. Jesus' peace is internal. It's unshakable. It's not dependent on our circumstances. It is an abiding peace. Jesus tells us in this world we're going to have trouble. It's never because of the absence of problems or trouble that we have peace. No, 
We have peace in spite of all of that. There's always going to be unexpected bills and issues and problems at work and you know, times when you get a bad report from the doctor, you get a letter it, it, from the IRS in the mail. What happens when you get that letter? You know, most of the time it's some little silly thing. And yet, nonetheless, every time when I get that letter that says IRS Internal Revenue Service, I think my heart skips a beat. You know what I'm saying? But see, we need to learn to have peace no matter what's going on. Even if we did get a letter and it was something serious, we need to have the peace of God. That's the peace that Jesus gives to us. Not an outward peace, but a peace on the inside. See, we got to know this, that His peace is different from the world's peace. See, peace on the outside will always come and go. Mostly go. Did you know that Jesus says, it's really confusing on the surface, on the face of it, Matthew 10, 34, Jesus says, do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. Now he's not talking about his peace here, an inward peace. He's talking about peace on the outside. You see, at this time, Jesus isn't come, he didn't come to set up world peace on this earth. He didn't come to bring that kind of peace. But he did come to give us peace on the inside. It is a peace that is real, even in the midst of a great battle. You know, the Lord called Gideon to lead the children of Israel into battle, to fight for their freedom. And this is what he says to Gideon. This is part of what he said to him. It's Judges 6, 23 and 24. The Lord said to him, Peace be with you. Do not fear. You shall not die. So Gideon built an altar there to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. That's in the Hebrew, Jehovah Shalom. That's where we get that. Jehovah Shalom. It came from this passage where Gideon says, the Lord is peace. And he's about to lead the people into battle. We need to understand that no matter what we go through, no matter how great the battle, the Lord is our peace. There's still peace in the midst of the battle. That's the kind of peace that Jesus gives. That's what he's talking about when he says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. No, it is a lasting peace that even when the battle's raging all around you, even when it just seems like, you know, there's a flood of trouble in your life, that you can still be at peace. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Say, we can have peace no matter what is going on around us. And Jesus' peace is freely given to us. He says, my peace I give to you. How do you receive this? By faith. It's a gift. He gives it to us. And we need to receive it by faith. In fact, Isaiah 53 and 5, in the prophecy of the Lord Jesus' passion, it tells us the chastisement for our peace was upon Him. See, we know this. Jesus paid the price for our sins that we might be saved. And how do you receive this? By faith. Jesus bore stripes, wounds. He suffered so that we might be healed. And Jesus also suffered so that we could have peace. And we receive it the same way. We receive it by faith. We just believe that He gives it to us. Believe for your salvation. We believe that we're forgiven. We need to believe that we receive this peace, the chastisement of our peace was upon Him. 
John 16, Jesus says, These things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. In me you may have peace. See, apart from Jesus, you can't find peace. You can't have real peace. You can't look to other things for peace. He's the sovereign ruler of the universe. There isn't anything that he doesn't know. There isn't anything that he can't do. And this God loves you. You can have peace. You see, when, when you know that he is your provider, when you know that you know that you know, you can have peace no matter what is going on in this world financially. Even when you lose your job, you can still have peace when you know that He's your provider. See, you can have peace when you know that He is your healer. No matter what the doctor says, the report says, no matter what's going on, you can still have peace. You can know that if He is your avenger, when people have wronged you and that there's things going on where you're being attacked, I want you to know you can have peace through that when you know that He is your avenger. You see, we just need to realize this God we serve, He's big enough to take care of His children. We should always have peace. He's still our shepherd. He's still our God. He's still our defender. He makes the way for us no matter what's going on. Now, I want to go to this story in Mark chapter 4. It's a familiar story, but I want us to see some spiritual truth here this morning. Mark chapter 4, verse 35 through 41, it says, On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side. And now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he went, excuse me, as he was, and... uh, the other little boats were also with them, and a great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are per- perishing? You ever feel like that? Lord, don't you care? He arose and rebuked the wind and the sea, and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? A lot of the time when we talk about this passage of Scripture, we talk about faith, we talk about how Jesus told them, He says, How is it that you have no faith? But I want you to see there's some principles here we just need to know and understand. First of all, first of all about the storms of life that it's never too much too hard for the Lord to stop your storm. Your battle. Now some of us know that and we just find it very frustrating because we're just like, well, "Why don't he?" Right? But you need to know this that He absolutely can. We need to have faith that God absolutely can step into our situation and bring peace, bring victory. In just a moment, that battle, that struggle can be over. But there's another spiritual truth that I want you to see here. He says to the wind, the waves, He says, Peace, be still. This is what He said. Peace, be still. And there was a great calm. And the disciples realized that even the wind and the waves obeyed Him. He was Lord of the storm. A great calm came. Is He Lord of your life? Because if Jesus is Lord of our life, when He says, My peace I give to you, we should have a great calm. That all the storm inside stops. All that stress and conflict, it should just stop when we hear His Word. My peace I give to you. 
You see, you just need to allow that great calm to come on you when you realize that He has given you His peace. You see, He can give us peace even in the midst of the storm, through the battle that we're going through. We can have absolute peace. It's not too much for Him. If He can speak peace to the wind and the waves, can He not speak peace to your troubled mind, to your heart? He can. He is Lord, Lord of the storm. He's Lord of whatever you go through. All kinds of great struggles and battles people go through with illness or financial problems, or divorce. I'll talk about one that's rather trite, but I think some others might be able to relate to it. He's Lord even over traffic. I'm a country boy. And, uh, you know, some people, I guess, get used to it. I will never get used to the traffic in DFW. I know it's a bad confession, but I'm just saying. One day, I'm behind this really, really slow driver. You know, they're driving like 10 miles an hour under, and I think that's just of the devil, by the way. I'm just sorry, but... And, and, you know, I'm thinking, they're making me late. I got things to do. And so instead of having peace, I'm like gripping the steering wheel. You ever done this and didn't even know you were doing it until all of a sudden you were like, oh. Anybody ever uptight and like stressed out and you're all tense and you finally kind of realize it and relax? And so instead of having peace, this is how I'm handling this. You know, I'm like, Ugh. They finally turned off, and I was coming up to a traffic light that's one of those really, really long ones, and it turns green. And I'm like, wow, that just saved me like three minutes. That's more than that slow driver cost me. And I'm thinking, you are Lord of the traffic lights. I just want you to realize He's Lord no matter what's going on. You get stuck in traffic for 45 minutes, you're at a dead standstill. What are you going to do? <clears throat> no, listen, He's still sovereign Lord. You can have peace no matter what's going on. God's bigger than all that. He's bigger. Th now, that's just a little thing, isn't it, traffic? Well, some of you can relate. But you see, He's bigger than your biggest battle. We need to learn to trust Him. We, get, we can have peace. If we just learn that He is in control, He is Lord, Jesus has the peace. And He invites us to come to Him. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, He says to a stressed out world, He says, Come to Me, all you who labor and are heavy laden. I think, especially in our culture maybe, we find ourselves here where we say, well, you know, i got work to do. I've got responsibilities. He knows. He says, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's not talking about a vacation. He's talking about rest for your soul. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. See, Jesus is talking to people who were working so hard, they're under such a heavy load, and he didn't tell them, that, well, go, just go quit your job, shirk your responsibilities. No, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. Learn from me. You see, he's inviting us to learn his ways. This is the call to be a disciple, by the way, is to learn from Jesus but he says, take my yoke upon you. You know, when you talk about a yoke, we need to realize that a yoke is designed for two. That's why they call it 
A pair of oxen is called a yoke of oxen. It's designed for two. And when you take Jesus' yoke upon you, you're hooking up with Jesus. Take my yoke upon you. Being yoked together with Jesus is a wonderful thing. But I am going to tell you this, that when you yoke together with Jesus, you're going His way. He's not going your way. See, when you yoke together with Jesus, you can be free from the stress, the anxiety, all of that weight and burden and pressure. But you're going to have to go His way. Because Jesus said, I always do what pleases the Father. I say what He wants me to say. And you see, when we yoke up with Jesus, we need to understand that our life is no longer just ours to, to live the way we want. Because the truth is, we're never really going to have peace doing it our way. His yoke. That's to serve, to obey, to please Him. And that's what we do as true followers of Jesus. You see, pretenders and part-time believers won't ever really have this peace. You know, it is for those who are willing to truly serve Him and live for Him. Without that, we end up just carrying the weight of the world on our own. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn from Him. Learn from Jesus. So think about this. He says, I am gentle and lowly in heart. He's gentle. Jesus was gentle. You know, a lot of times people, they want to focus on this event where Jesus cleansed the temple. Listen, I understand that Jesus was forceful that day. But you need to know this, that His demeanor and His normal way was that He was gentle. Learn from me, He says, I am gentle. And what I'm saying to you is, is that if we're going to have rest for our souls, and remember, he says, learn from me, and you can have rest for your soul. We're going to learn from him. We need to understand that we don't have to force our way. We don't have to make it happen. We're serving a God who can do anything. And I want to tell you that you can push and pull and fight and struggle all you want to, but in the end, without God's help, it's not happening. We can be gentle. And he says, I am gentle and lowly, humble. The Savior of the world was humble. Again, we need to remember that when we are humble, then God shows us grace. But when we are proud, He resists us. If we want rest for our souls, then we need to humble ourselves and let God be God. I think a lot of the time we feel such a heavy load because we think too much of ourselves. Well, if I don't do this, if I don't take care of it, if I don't get it done, it won't happen. Okay, well, I may just be preaching to me. Y'all are getting quiet, but okay, I'm preaching to me then. That's all right. But here's what I know. is that God has to be God in our life. We have to humble ourselves and let Him rule and reign. Let Him take the heavy load. Here's our responsibility. Here's our yoke with Jesus. We just do what He wants us to do and we leave the rest to Him. See, we're, we're supposed to sow. We're supposed to water. But He's the one that gives the increase. And you know what? That's true for our lives in whatever area. As a parent, you know, providing for your family, whatever it is. You see, we do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, we've got responsibilities, but it's not our job to make it happen. No, we humble ourselves and we let our God take care of the heavy load. I love this story about George McCausland. He was a great YMCA director, but at one point the YMCA was really struggling, losing membership, and had all kinds of 
financial difficulties and staffing problems, and George ended up working 85 hours a week. He found himself not being able to sleep at night. He didn't ever get any time off, and when he was off, he was just worrying about all the problems at the YMCA. So he goes to a therapist on the verge of a nervous breakdown, and he told him that somehow he had to let go and let God. He didn't really know how to do that. But George said that he took an afternoon off and he walked out into the woods with a pad and a pen. And as he was walking through the woods, he said that for some reason, all of a sudden, he began to relax for the first time in a long time. And then he sat down and he wrote a letter to God. And he said the letter basically went like this, Dear God, Today I hereby resign as the general manager of the universe. Love, George. And with a twinkle in his eye, George McCausland said, A wonder of wonders, God accepted my resignation. I want to say it again. When we just obey God and do what God asks of us, He takes care of the rest. And we can rest. There are always going to be things in this life that we cannot control, and that's where most of our stress comes from. But there's not anything that our God can't do. There's not anything that's too big for Him. And those problems, those burdens that we can't fix, we just need to cast it over on Him. We need to turn it over to Him. You see, Jesus freely gives us this peace. But you need to get rid of those burdens. You need to turn that over to Him. It's 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. And there it is again that we need to humble ourselves. Let God be God. It's amazing to me how that even in some of the doctrines of the day, the pop theology of the day, it's too much, it sounds like people are trying to play God. They think too much of themselves. What we need to do is we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt us in due time. Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. All those burdens, you cast it over on the one who cares for you. I know it's not always easy. The key is to humble yourself and to say, Lord, I can't. I can't do this on my own. I can't fix this. Those things that are heavy on you, turn it over to Him. Turn it over to Him. He can handle it. I want you to stand with me. We're going to pray. I want our prayer partners to come.